what up so uh lately i've been getting bored you know not a lot going on in my, <laughs> with my life so i figured i would go and do another electronics project to occupy my time the last one i did was the line following robot using arduino but uh another problem i have is i can't think of i'm not creative enough i can't think of any projects so i've been getting into avr programming and uh, I wanted to get the AT Mega 644 because, you know, it's a 40 pin dip, so it's something I can use, solder, with a lot of outputs. And uh, it holds the biggest uh, program memory size. So it's pretty much the, you know, if I'm going to do a project, make another robot or something, it's pretty much the microcontroller choice for me to use. So, uh, Got this packet package from Mauser today on Thursday. I ordered it on Sunday, and actually I was pretty uh, happy with their shipping fees. It was like six dollars to ship. So let's see what I got. First time ordering from Mauser, and I usually order from Jameco, but. They don't carry the 644 in a dip package. Okay. So, uh, first thing we got is photo interrupters. Two photo interrupters. And that's... I'll explain why I have that later. And the worst part about ordering stuff is I had to think ahead of time of what I'll need. Oh, I got some... Wick. Uh, desoldering wick. So... When I desolder, I can actually do it properly. When I messed up. Okay, and here's I bought three 80 mega 644As. Um. Oh yeah, this is a uh, one. These are uh, 0 0.1 microfarad capacitors. I wanted to stock up a little more, uh, you know, so for, uh, because you use them on chips, it, it's good design to use a 0.1 microfarad capacitor on the voltage of a chip. And I can tell I already messed up. I got 50 volt, so they're a little big, but it doesn't bother me. I got uh, 10 uh, NPN transistors. Just so I had more NPN transistors in my stock. And then I got three uh, sockets for the microcontrollers. I tried to order as much as I can, think ahead of time stuff that I needed. And as you can see, this is where I keep all my other electrical, electronic stuff. So that's what I got. And like I said, I really don't have a project yet. I thought about making a balancing robot. But what I'm going to do in the meantime is uh, this is an 18 mega. 32. What I'm going to do in the meantime is create a board. I'm going to solder up a board. I'm going to use uh, just use this uh, proto board and solder up a board with the 18 mega 644 and an LCD. So that way I have a nice setup to test sensors and other values. So you know I can use. I'll read the results of sensors and how they interact with the microcontroller through the LCD. And I hate using uh, these breadboards, so I'm going to solder up a nice board that in the future, you know, I can add a sensor to it and read the sensor values. So uh, right here is a AT Mega 32 wired up 4-bit uh, mode to this cheap one-line LCD that I got when I made an order from Element 14. Now on the same day, last Sunday, the same day I ordered this stuff from Sparkblun, I ordered a red on black because it looked cool, uh, 16 characters, two lines, LCD. And uh, it just shipped today. It took them till today to ship. So that that's the LCD I'm going to use for this board. And uh, I also ordered a Magician robot chassis from SparkFun because 
the price of that what you get with the motors and stuff you know 15 bucks you know if you're going to buy the Tamiya dual uh, gear drive motors that's 10 bucks and you get the tires with this so I figured that would get that too so hopefully that will come in uh, soon but today what I'm going to do is try to set up when I set up this AT Mega 32 I I didn't I thought I broke the port C but later I found out that it was because I uh, port C has some JTAG and sorry I, I'm bad with names it has some some debugging software that it automatically ships with the fuse bits enabled that prevents you from using port C and I didn't realize that so I have 4 bit mode I have the enable in the RS and RW on port B and I'm I have the four bits on uh, on port D and I have the four bits on uh, yeah I, port B and I have the four bits on port D so to optimize the use of the AT Mega 644 I'm gonna go and when I build this new board I'm gonna go and have all the LCD commands driven off of port C and that's to free up space so I have I can optimally optimize the use of PWM ports that are on port uh, B and D and the analog and digital converter on port A on a leave free so I'll just use port C as the LCD commands now the way I'm gonna wire it up it would be easier if the four parallel bits to the LCD is off of port C 0, 1, 2, and 3. You see right now I'm using uh, 4, 5, 6, and 7 off the port so I can easily shift the bits over. So it, uh, another experiment I'm going to have to work out and I can always do that but it would look better if I had everything parallel going up to it so I want to try to put the data bits on 0, 1, 2, 3 so uh, today I'm going to go and pull this chip out, put the 644A in, wire it up so that it's in 4-bit mode with the bits on 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to have like port E on, I'm going to have the enable on port C4 and I'm going to have the RS on port uh, C5. And I'm going to try to see if I can get away with tying the RW to ground since I don't use it at all in, in this code. And this works. But uh, I'm going to see if I can get it working with the AT Mega 644. And uh, I'm just making this video because I thought it would be a neat video to uh, you know, see what I'm doing with this project. If you have any uh, criticism on how I operate, you know, I'm just doing this for fun. And if you have any criticism or comments to help me out or ideas or you're just wondering why I uh, did what I did, feel free to uh, leave it in the comments. I'm just uh, going to document my whole process with this project and my logic and what I'm thinking. So uh, let's get it wired up. Okay, so the 644 is pin compatible with the 32. So I just pulled the six the 32 out and put the 644 in and as you can see I'm using a USB tiny and I made this uh, adapter for the breadboard um, I plugged this in I used this the other day no problem plugged it in somehow the drivers got lost so I had to re-download the drivers and uh, I got it communicating up here and I checked the fuses by default and uh, low fuse is 62 high fuse is 99 and on this fuse calculator this JTAG interface enabled it is enabled with the those fuse numbers and so that prevents you, you from using port C so for me to use port C I gotta disable that so I'm gonna uncheck that and the calculator says it changes the low stays the same low is still 62 the high is now D9 instead of uh, 69 I mean instead of 99 you see low was 62 high was 99 so now I have to go and write that fuse uh, 
to go and write that fuse to uh, D9. Okay, so I went and wrote it. So now when I did it again, 62 and a D9. So now that J tag is disabled and I can use port C. So now we gotta hook it up and uh, program it. Okay, so what I just did to verify operation of this chip, I went and I programmed this chip with the same program that I had the 18 mega 32 programmed as using the same pins just to make sure it would drive the LCD and it did. So we're good to go. Now what I'm gonna do is transfer this to port C, edit the code. To do that, I'm gonna get I'm gonna transfer the R S and E to port C and I'm gonna get rid of the R W. I'm gonna just tie it to ground and see if I can get this to happen. Okay, so I'm going through changing my code for the new wire setup. And you see before all I did was port D, I wrote the character to port D. And on four bit mode I wrote the character to port D and then I shifted the character over left four port D because I was using the top bit so I was using 7, 6, 5, 4 port D but now I'm inversing that so now I had to figure out an easy way to write it the character to uh, the first four bit the I had to find out a way to write the leftmost binary bits and flip them around so that the seventh bit is now the zero bit the sixth bit is now the five bit so that's the only problem with doing it that way and i want to the reason i want to do it that way is it'll make my lines when i have this lcd right above here which is where it's going to be on the board it'll just be straight lines to the ports okay so i was reminded why i hate these boards i was having a hell of a time and i decided that i ended up biting too much off at once so uh, I had some loose connections so it wasn't working. So what I did was I switched it. Now the data is running on port C and then everything else is the same. So now I'm gonna do one step at a time. I'm trying to get port C to, uh, instead of being seven, six, five, four, I'm gonna get port C to be zero, one, two, and three. Mission accomplished. So the whole idea of keeping the bits parallel I threw that out the window it's just so much easier to crisscross them so I have them I have the data running off of PC 7654 I have RS on uh, port 3 port C3 and I have E on port C2 now when you have them on the same port you had to do uh, something special in the code so it doesn't affect the R, S, and E when you write the data to the ports. But the code is really sloppy, man. And I have an idea in my head on how to make it neater, more efficient, I guess. But this is proof that this will work. So uh, next thing I'm going to do, and I'm tired of this uh, breadboard. I was When I was messing around with these things, I was pulling out wires. So... Uh, I'm going to wait till the, I'm going to go and draw up the plans for what I'm going to solder together. I'm going to wait till uh, the spark fun LCD, the one that I'm actually going to use come in. I'm going to go and rip everything apart and uh, build it back on this proto board according to the plans I'm drawing. And this is what I got so far. I just put the power supply in and drew the chip in. So I'm going to write it on out, go and create this on a proto board to make sure I didn't make any mistakes on my schematic, and then I'll go and solder everything together. So I'm going to end this video now, and uh, in the next video you'll probably see of this project is when I get all the stuff in and I have the real LCD set up on the proto board. So thanks for watching. If you have any ideas or comments, feel free to leave them below.